hello there guys and welcome welcome back to the channel right so finally we are here 726 exploration guide but before we get into anything else uh i already have uploaded gwenferian guide that i will leave a link to in the video description because in this video i'm not gonna go over too much gwenferian's individual abilities however one thing that i do uh, need to explain is uh that gwenferian just like grandmaster has several different links associated with them now we all know the juiced one where you get a ton of furies and you end up doing a poop ton of damage there are several other uh links to her one of the more annoying ones is when she goes unblockable if you have more than 15 combo on your combo meter however at the same time uh it isn't that bad and only place where it really comes into play is i guess is the tech phase uh and perhaps the knockdown phase where your combo meter matters but for the most part i just end up getting hit in the face and uh persevered and uh finished the job because as soon as you get struck once combo meter gets reset and then she's not unblockable anymore and then you're free to parry her and all that other good stuff it was a bit messier fight but it was not too bad then you have gwen mastery which uh can be extremely problematic for a couple of champions let's say Aegon. Because it gives Gwen Master Mystic Dispersion, which can come into play, obviously, by triggering precision and all that other stuff. Uh, so keep that to note as well. And always check out whatever link you are activating. And uh, she only has one of these links active at any given fight, based on which path you took. And uh, yeah, like Band-Aid doesn't really matter. Juiced is actually helping you a lot. Power Rush. Uh, doing the missions get a bit more annoying you need to intercept more gwen mastery as i mentioned gives her mystic dispersion nice or fantastic and make her go unblockable but as you can note there are six paths and five links therefore by definition i suppose this would be considered the easy path which is energy adoption fire which does not enable any of those things that we just talked about therefore we can start first by discussing this lane so this lane starts here on the left side with the spider ham so we have energy adoption fire shake it off which allows skill attackers purify debuffs and a whole bunch of them very quickly by dashing back then we have shifting immunity which is kind of like an annoying note that to be honest i would have much preferred this lane without it and bleed vulnerability so ideally you're meant to use skill champions that has access to bleed and wait when the bleed immunity goes away and shifts to poison immunity and then put on a crap ton of bleeds and you're going to be dealing a lot of damage. Now, I did a lot of this fight with uh, Nick Fury, for instance. He did fantastic here. But in general, really, I think the best approach is just to abuse the energy adoption fire node. And uh, then you can use Human Torch. You can use uh, Ghost to gain a ton of attack power and just ghost through it. You can use Kingpin and uh, Silver Surfer and a whole bunch of different champions. Kind of ignoring the rest of the mechanics in this fight. If you really want to play by the rules then yes bring in nick fury bring in gwenpool i don't know ronin mallman what other skill champions that inflict a ton of bleeds you're gonna be able to purify the incinerates that you get and all will be well so that is the easy path technically because it does not enable any links on gwenpedian even though again juice link is extremely helpful to you so now that we have discussed the first path, let's move on to the next one. And this is a no retreat, no surrender path, which a lot of people are kind of panicking about with hardly any reason. It also has heavy assault right back at it in true strike. So waiting here will not be an option. However, uh, that no retreat and no surrender node combination is actually absolutely amazing. I love it. Now, people hate no retreat, but in combination, no surrender, it's amazing. Now, No Surrender is the attacker resists up to 90% of the degeneration damage uh, based on how many bars of power you have filled. So if you have three bars of power active, you're only going to be taking 10% of No Retreat damage. So what you want to do is get to three bars of power, trigger No Retreat degeneration, and then drop a heavy attack on opponent because at that point you will transfer the degeneration to the opponent you get from no retreat and will be dealing a ton of damage now again and there is heavy assault node which obviously encourages you to do just that but remember that there is right back at it so every time you do knock down the defender uh, they're going to go debuff immune for four seconds so it's not like you want or can spam heavy attacks on this line now 
a few personal suggestions would be any champion that has a improved power gain or a quick way to get three bars of power will obviously be work quite, working quite well because once you get three bars of power you just don't use your special attacks you just get the no retreat drop a heavy attack and watch them die so for instance hyperion or dr doom would work absolutely amazing here on top of that we do have the standard no retreat counters that you can use like lady hulk or spider ham at this point oh wait no retreats passive so spider ham doesn't work but lady hulk does and uh last suggestion last recommendation for these lanes is do remember that you have very little need to dash back if you are power controlling the opponents so Champions with very strong power control are also extremely potent on this lane, such as magic, such as perhaps Dormammu, if you happen to have one ranked up for whatever reason, uh, or even for individual fights, maybe uh, Guillotine 2099, if you want to be spamming that uh, level 1 initially, that would make sure that you have zero need to be dashing back in the first place, thus never triggering no retreat. Right, we can move on to the next lane. Next line is actually quite fun. So we have this under pressure node, which I hate. When the attacker dashes back, they gain a disorient timer for 1.2 seconds. Dashing back again will trigger disorient. So it's kind of like a no retreat, except degen damage, you take disorient. Which sucks. <laughs> I don't like that. But then we have encroaching stun, which technically obviously makes this fight even this part even more sketchy and stressful. Where, well, we all know what encroaching stun does. It randomly stuns you every 20 seconds. Then, however, we do have Heavy Assault and Foresight, which are two very potent attack modifying lanes. So Foresight automatically means that if you are comfortable intercepting, you will be doing just fine. So using Ghost, Elves of Bloodstones, uh, using uh, Molemans for the latter fights over there, whatever, it's going to be A-OK. -okay. Uh, or you can use champions that abuse heavy mechanics and have some potent effects on heavies. Speaking of that, uh, I have seen this lane be absolutely destroyed by a Domino, because if you bring in Domino Trinity and you just parry heavy, you will be able to probably kill the opponents before the 20 second mark is off in like 2 or 3 heavy attacks, uh, because with 500% increased damage on heavy attacks, plus all that juicy, juicy incinerate damage, you're going to be able to get through the fights quickly. In addition to that, we have Nick Fury, who can completely ignore the... Uh, encroaching stun once life model deco is destroyed have emma frost who can go stun immune then we have newer champions like shang chi jabari panther uh, that uh, can have the cleanse charges locked and loaded for when no retreat would trigger we have apocalypse that can quite easily bypass no retreat or in general you can just play carefully use more or less any champion and ideally have that champion have relatively long special attacks so it is easier to time around them the only notes for this lane would be that you have Mephisto to keep an eye out for. So ideally, you do want somebody that is incinerate damage immune. Other than that, it is fairly straightforward lane, just kind of like nothing too exciting, nothing too crazy. Few cheese options available. Next up, I don't have to talk a lot about this lane. I think uh, uh, at this point, pretty much everybody watching my channel knows how awesome this lane is. So you have Matador, you have Icarus, Special Connoisseur, and Buff Synthesis, Fury Precision, turning into uh, Prowess Buffs. So obviously Angela is by far the safest, the best, the cheesiest, the craziest uh, option you can bring in here. But you can use a ton of different champions. I have, well, Corvus basically is going to be destroying opponents with a single special attack. And... Uh, yeah, you just need to play slightly cautiously. You need to know exact. You need to know what you're doing. You need to know how to get the prowess effects. But Icarus, to be honest, makes it very easy, and just not get carried away. This is a path to have fun, not a path to stress. The only noteworthy counter there would be the Guillotine 2099, because obviously her level one power drains you. So getting power drained by Guillotine sucks because. Uh, this path also has Matador on, so if you are trying to play bar for bar power, it's not going to work very well. So you're going to have to try and push her past two bars of power instead of one, but that triggers the Spectre debuff that reverses your regeneration, which is kind of annoying. But you can still get it done with Angela, I have done it with Angela myself. Or in general, you also can bring in champions that cannot be power drained by metal characters. So for instance, uh, 
Terex would be oddly amazing option for this. Then we also have uh, Venom, who cannot be power drained or power burned by tech champions, I believe. And uh, who else is immune to power control? I think Annihilus is also immune to be power controlled by Guillotine. Or again, you can just push her two bars of power. And you're not going to have too much to worry about, especially if you're not running Suicide Masteries, unlike me. Next up, this is the Juice Path. This is the path that makes Gwen Perion the easiest encounter ever because it will allow you to get a ton of amazing Furies on. Right, however, the path itself is not quite the most straightforward one. I have a feeling that it was kind of intended to be, but there is an oversight. So, whenever the defender receives an armor break debuff while stun debuff is active, both are removed and you inflict a cold snap debuff, which works great for the mix master, right? Because you remove you are removing your armor breaks, putting cold snap and disabling mix master. But at the same time, there's also hit me, I dare you, and armor assault. So every opponent eventually will get those armor up buffs, and then getting rid of them when they are unblockable already is much harder task because a lot of champions like after American Infinity War Corvus and so forth rely on parrying or landing that stun to inflict armor break. So it doesn't really work all that way. So what do you want to do? You want to use champions that armor break on their base combos. So champions like Captain Marvel Movie will be working extremely well here. Annihilus, Medusa will be great options. Doctor Doom with Mr. Fantastic Synergy will be amazing options as well. And uh, alternatively, you can choose to play around these nodes. And you can do that with True Strike and Intercepting. So when you have True Strike active, oops, Opponents can't evade, so you don't have to worry about Mixmaster. And the only thing to worry about is Armored Assault, which basically means you're going to be playing against unblockable opponents, which isn't all that hard if you're familiar and uh, decently adapt with the intercept techniques. Uh, the quickest way how I got through myself on the last path, last run that I did, I just brought in Corvus with some Cosmic Power Boosts and uh, I completely blitzed through all of this. It wasn't too bad at all. You can definitely also, once again, bring in Ghost, because Ghost doesn't care if opponents are unblockable. You can just get openings generically. Also, Bloodstone could potentially be a relatively viable option, because, again, uh, you are able to play around the awaits, and you can find openings without taking uh, hit parries or hits on a block. Mole Man can be a decent option as well, because you're still going to go on... So, well, I think Mole... I actually didn't try Mole Man. Might not be absolutely correct, but so you can Corvus, you can Quake, you can Ghost, uh, you can True Strike champions in here, or you can use the champions that have armor breaks on their regular combos uh, or some special one effects as well. Uh, it's not going to be the easiest time, but it's not going to be too bad either to get through it. Let's move on to the last lane. The last lane can be a bit daunting. Now we have this buff synthesis, armor up and precision. Flare, which means you're going to be taking degeneration damage all the way. And then we have physical resistance, energy resistance, and critical resistance. Now, the idea here is uh, that you're going to be gaining this uh, true damage buff or true strike buff for 15 seconds when you combine your precision buff with armor up buff, which kind of works decently well for a lot of champions. So if, if you bring in champions that have armor up buffs, you will have access to True Strike, which is going to be helpful. However, then the next fight is Havoc, and if you get rid of your armor buffs, you're going to get wrecked by Havoc, because he's going to detonate a ton of damage on you. Now, my personal strategy for these lanes were to rely more on damage over time effects, and uh, try not to use that node as much as Kabam would have intended us to do. Because um, bleed damage, poison damage, uh, and few other forms of damage are classed as direct damage. Therefore, they are not unaffected by physical or energy resistance. So champions like Archangels, champions like Nick Fury, or any other champions that are capable of doing a lot of bleed or poison damage, or, for instance, Archangels Neurotoxin damage, bypasses all of those resistances anyways. Obviously, then on top, you can still bring in uh, Molman, who works fantastic with Flair and his uh, guaranteed crits. And that buff synthesis node, it really didn't 
matter too much. You just gotta kind of use the fact that you have flare and you can bypass all of those resistances. Now, fighting against havoc, you need to be tricky not to trigger precision in critical moments because remember, it is going to eat away at your armor buffs and that obviously will not bode well for you. So don't do that. Or bring in champions that have access to multiple stacks of armor and buffs to have a bit bigger of a safety net. Let's say, over the duff. I don't know, maybe you have one. But in general, I did that fight with Hulkbuster. I just did my best not to dex and drop the level 2 and power control him. And yeah, if you don't trigger dexterity much, then uh, it's not going to take away your armor and buff. But that is about it for this lane. Other than that, uh, I don't think there is anything else that really needs to be pointed out. Obviously, scout the path. Be aware, obviously, if you have Morningstar on the lane, you need to bring in a Bleed Immune Champion. If you're going to have Symbiote Supreme on the path, don't bring in all the champions that are super buff heavy. If you're going to be fighting up against Mephisto, make sure you have an Incinerate Immune Champion, so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, uh, it's not the hardest quest. It is quite enjoyable. As I said, guide for Gwen Perion I will leave in the video description below and on top of that I just wanted to point out that it is an extremely cool thing that uh, no matter which path we do Kabam lets us swap out two champions and basically get two free heals in along the way as well because you can reach these nodes with like a champion that has like 10% health or something like that and swap in a perfectly healthy option for Gwen Master boss to get the fight done so that was like a very nice courteous thing of Kabam to do, which kind of sounds weird to say because we don't get that too often from them. So that was very cool. I like that. I like the fact that I could alter my team and pick just, just have the boss counters, even if I didn't want to have them for the path fights themselves. But yeah, that is it. Let me know if you have any more questions. I'll do my best to try and answer them. And uh, see you when 7.3 comes out. I'm just kidding. See you later today. Uh, see ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the 